lesson from the 14th chapter of St. Matthew's Gospel, beginning at verse 13. Now when Jesus heard this, he withdrew from there in a boat to a desolate place by himself. But when the crowds heard it, they followed him on foot from the towns. When he went ashore, he saw a great crowd, and he had compassion on them, and healed their sick. Now, when it was evening, the disciples came to him and said, This is a desolate place, and the day is now over. Send the crowds away to go into the villages and buy food for themselves. But Jesus said, They need not go away. You give them something to eat. They said to him, We have only five loaves here and two fish. And he said, Bring them here to me. Then he ordered the crowds to sit down on the grass, and taking the five loaves and the two fish, he looked up to heaven and said a blessing. Then he broke the loaves and gave them to the disciples, and the disciples gave them to the crowds. And they all ate and were satisfied. And they took up twelve baskets full of the broken pieces left over, and those who ate were about five thousand men, besides women and children. The Gospel of the Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. What a contrast of viewpoints. On the one hand, we hear and see our Savior showing compassion on the crowds following him. He and his disciples had crossed the Sea of Galilee to get away from the busyness of the crowds for a time. But those people following Christ wanted nothing of that idea. They pursued him to this desolate area, perhaps without really thinking through the logistics of such a decision. And how did our Lord react to this throng of people? He had compassion on them. On the other hand, we see the viewpoint of his disciples. Humanly speaking, their request made sense. They were in a desolate place. There was nothing to eat. They were far away from home and it was getting dark. Thousands of people stranded on the hillside would have proved to be an issue later in the evening. But their eyes and their minds were blind to whom they were speaking. So Jesus told his disciples, You feed them. We can imagine incredulous looks following that statement. But we only have five loaves of bread and a few fish, his disciples replied, in defense of their statement. And again, even after being commanded by their Lord to do something, they still were blind to who he was. Well, then bring them to me. And we know the rest of the story. A few loaves and fish fed 5,000 men, not counting women and children. Enough food to barely feed their motley crew would not only feed thousands, but they have a a plethora of leftovers. What compassion by our Lord. The Greek word used here for compassion is splankidzomai, which literally means his guts moved. He saw these people, their desperation and depravity, their sickness and disease, and his guts wrenched inside of him in pity. But it was more than just a pitiful glance or a sorrowful look from our Lord. No, here we see him healing the sick. We hear him inviting them to stay for dinner. We see these people satisfied after they eat their fill. His compassion was more than just mere words or ideas. He did something about it, and he did it to the full. But are we not like his disciples? Do we not look around and see the suffering and the pitiful states of those we love, and fail to understand who our teacher and master truly is? Perhaps we come up with some lousy excuses not to say something to them, like Moses did in front of the burning bush. But I'm not good at speaking. How could I possibly say something to them? 
Perhaps we lack the compassion that Jesus had. Like his disciples did another time when they wanted to drive children away who wanted to see Jesus. Perhaps we lack faith in what Christ can do. Like Judas, who thought that the sins that he had committed were far too great to be forgiven by his Lord. Dear Christian, open your eyes. See who your teacher is. Repent of your unbelief and your lack of compassion and your lousy excuses. Because your Lord has compassion on you, too. He sees you in your sin and disobedience, and he has compassion. He doesn't just have some words of pity to say. No, his words carry power and might. I forgive you your sins. After all, he did tell us that whatever we bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever we loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. No, our Lord doesn't just have a sympathetic look for you. He watches over your coming and your going forevermore. Nor did Christ just perform some small task to make it appear that he cares for you. No, he literally took your sin and shame on himself. He endured pain and punishment for you on the cross. So, dear Christian, open your eyes. See who your teacher and Lord is. Trust in his power and promise. Believe in his forgiveness and love, and live in his compassion and grace. Amen. Let us pray. Baptized into your name, most holy, O Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, I claim a place, though weak and lowly, among your saints, your chosen host, buried with Christ and dead to sin. Your Spirit now shall live within. My loving Father, there you took me to be henceforth your child and heir. My faithful Savior, there you let me the fruit of all your sorrows share. O Holy Spirit, comfort me when threatening clouds around I see. My faithful God, you never fail me. Your promise surely will endure. O cast me not away forever if words and deeds become impure. Have mercy when I come defiled. Forgive, lift up, restore your child. All that I am and love most dearly, receive it all, O Lord, from me. Let me confess my faith sincerely and help me your own child to be. Let nothing that I am or own serve any will but yours alone. Amen. Thank you.